Once loaders have what they require to start loading, they post a barricade across the entrance to the loading operation. This barricade, often a rope or chain, is hung across the drift at about chest height. Ensure it's not too low, as a scoop operator may not see it. Signage is attached to the barricade rope, stating that there is a loading operation underway. No entry, no smoking, authorized persons only. The blasters assess the drill pattern they're about to load, looking at the number of holes, their depth, and condition. They determine the sequence for detonating each hole. They want the center of the round to detonate first. This is called the cut. The sequence the holes detonate in is critical. A properly delayed round breaks the ground better, while doing less damage to the back, walls, ventilation and services. The number on a shock tube assembly detonator indicates its delay in milliseconds. A trusted partner is important. Working together, they protect each other by following proper procedures and watching out for hazards. The blaster inserts the detonator into stick powder and tapes them to ensure they stay together during loading. Once the powder and detonator are coupled, they become the primer. The blaster inserts the primer into the appropriate hole, carefully pushing it to the back, making sure the detonator assembly leg wire doesn't get tangled. There will be about two meters of wire hanging out of the hole. The blaster then loads the hole with an ammonium sulfide-based explosive like ANFO or Amex, or an emulsion-style explosive. Care is taken to ensure the explosives are in full contact with each primer. After all the holes have been primed and loaded, the blasters move most of the gear out of the way and start the tie-in. Blasters run a string of B-line to the face, clipping in each detonator assembly using Cobra clips. Once the detonating assemblies are all attached, the excess tails are coiled up. They must never be cut. It's very important to keep the B-line and detonator assemblies organized and tidy so they don't come into contact with one another during initiation of the blast. It's also very important to never step on the detonator assemblies or cord. B-line is then strung out from the blast face by about 30 feet, where it's connected to the detonating cap. The cap shown here is an icon detonator. Other detonators, such as electric cap, are used elsewhere. The detonator cap is secured to the B-line so they don't separate during the blasting operation. The blaster ensures the end of the detonating cap is pointing in the direction of the round to be fired. The detonating cap has two leg wires. They are attached to the lead line, or blast line, which is duplex insulated copper wire. This line is strung back to the point of blast initiation. The B line must form a loop from the blast detonator around the entire face of the round being blasted. This provides more than one path of initiation for the loaded blast holes. The detonating cap leg wires are secured to something solid so they stay in place. In this mine, the blasters will connect the blast to an icon detonating machine. In mines that use a central blasting system, the lead line would be connected to the blasting box. All right, so set off a blast. We're gonna take our two lead wire here, split it down the middle, expose both copper ends. Grab our logger here, turn on the logger. We'll go to log detonator, cycle through that. We'll put our leads in both sides here. Tighten it down, make sure there's no play, cause interruption. We'll now go into our logger, select measure leakage, make sure there's no leakage throughout the line. Let's do that. Shut the logger back off. This, this connects your logger to your blaster. Insert it here. Each end in the top, doesn't matter which color goes where. There. Now, before you turn your law or your blaster on, grab your key. Can't do anything without the key. Nothing will ever work. Strip the key, the slot at the bottom. Turn on the blaster, which in turn will turn on the logger. You don't have to do anything else with the logger. Everything you do strictly from the blaster. We'll bring up your codes, read your logger. Pretty much will give you permission to fire. Let's do that. Before you fire, make sure everything's good. Check your leakage. We'll make sure the area is roped off. 
your exhaust raise is in the proper area, guards posted, make your call out on the cha on the radio. And attention all underground personnel, if, uh, shots will be fired and give them a two minutes warning. Once the two minutes is up, you'll put out another call saying firing shots, fire, fire, fire. If they fire your shots, let them notify them that shots have been fired and then start disconnecting it. Wait a couple minutes, have your gas detector go in, make sure the area is clear. Once the entire level has been cleared, you can call the all clear, take down your barricades, notify the mine that that area is clear. 